All right, guys, welcome to the last video of this little subsection that we need to get done before the unit. All right, so just so you guys know where we're going, the unit is going to be on transformations, which is just when you take something, most of the time it's going to be a polygon, you take a polygon and then you move it or do something to it so that it ends up somewhere else, all right? Or maybe it doesn't, and you'll see what I mean later on with that. But most, mostly, it's you just take the original, and then you move it somewhere else and see where it goes. So that might be confusing, so let's just go go and get started. So first, let's, we have an original, like I said. Our original in this case is this trapezoid, Q-U-A-D, all right? And we call this the original, we call this the pre-image. The pre-image is whatever you start with. All right, so then I'm going to do something to it. In this case, I'm going to move it up and to the right and make it bigger. All right, so here we go. It's going to go bang up to the right, get bigger. And now it's got these new points. All right, and you can notice that they're not just Q anymore or U or A or D. It's Q but with a little tick mark next to it and U with a little tick mark. And you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? So how we would say this is that this is Q prime, U prime, A prime, D prime, all right? This just means this is the second iteration, all right? This came from Q, this point right here, we got it from Q, it corresponds to Q. If this was smaller and down here, it would go right back to where Q was, but it's not Q, it's a different point and it's Q prime, all right? Now it's very important to leave these tick marks because this is how mathematicians tell us that we went from this, the pre-image, to this, which is the image, all right? And not the other way around, all right? Otherwise, if I just put Q, U, A, D again, I would never know if I had this up here and made this smaller to make that, or if I had this down here and make this bigger to make that. So this little tick marks tells us which ones are the second and which one's the first without even having to label them pre-image and image. So I can tell which one it is based on which one has tick marks. The tick marks is always going to come after the regular normal looking letters. All right, so this is the pre-image. This is the image. Now where we're really going with this is doing things on the coordinate plane. All right, so now let's say I have this triangle here, P-A-R. And I want to move it, all right? We're going to pretend that this is some stupid looking piece of furniture that I have. And this whole grid is my living room. And I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put this thing. So um, first I decide I want to put it in the exact middle of the room, basically. I want to put it right over here. So where is it now? Well, right now, P is at negative 6, positive 2 for the coordinate. We got a at negative 5, positive 5, and negative 3, 2 is where R is. All right, so that's the current location of my vertices, and I'm going to move it over here and see what happens. All right, so I take this, I move it like this, and now it's in the middle of the room, kind of, and now it's got some new points. So now I have P prime, A prime, R prime. Now, like I said, this is kind of a ghost at this point. So the pre-image is not even a real thing that's supposed to be existing because obviously if I've used this, if I've moved this piece of furniture from here to here, it doesn't still exist over here. This is just the ghost, all right? But this is where it is now. That's why it's called the image, and this is called the pre-image, which is where it was, but it's not actually there anymore, all right? That's why it's in the past tense, pre-image. So I can tell which one is which, like I said. I can tell that I did not move it from the center of the room up here on this graph because I have these little tick marks. This is P prime, A prime, R prime. And they have new locations, all right? So P prime is negative one, negative one. That's right here. We got A prime, which is zero, two, and R prime, which is two, negative one. Okay, now let's say that I get this uh, piece of furniture and I put it in the middle of the room like I just did. And I still don't like it, all right? I want to move it somewhere else. I'm going to move it up here now, see how that looks. And I do. So I take this and I move it up here. Well, now it's got new points. It's got P double prime, 
a double prime and r double prime. All right, so you can tell now that this was the second iteration after I changed it. All right, so now again, now neither of these exist. They are both basically pre-images, and this is what I'm working with. This is the image. All right, but you can tell just by these markings that I went from here to here to here. All right, you can tell the exact order that I went in, and I could move this down here, and I would have p triple prime and a triple prime, so on. All right, and you can do this all day. I can move it to like five or six different spots, and as long as I keep marking them like this, then I can tell where I've been and what order I went in and all that. And then that's very useful for communication. But that's the gist here. All right, this is the pre-image. This is what you started with, and then this is the image, which is what where you went to, and you can tell because this is a and this is a prime r r prime p p prime. They they kind of relate to each other, but they're not the same. And it's very important we to put these tick marks here because if you put that this is just p a r again, I'm like, nope, that's a, a p a r is up here, my friend. This is p prime a prime r prime. All right, so make sure you're putting the tick marks, um, and just know that it's very important for notation purposes, especially later on in your math career.